Good morning, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Hope you all are doing well. Hi, Christopher. Hello, Abney. Hi, Kennedy. Hi. Hello, Rupa. Prabhakar, good to see you. Charles, my friend, how are you doing? Abhinas, good to see you. Good morning, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, too. Hey. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Rupa. Hope you're doing well. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, let's get started. Okay. Uh, can I request uh, one of us to just uh, lead us in prayer, please? Any one of us? Shall I pray first? Yes, please. Thanks, Abhi. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful for a new morning. We thank you, Father, for your mercies are new every morning. We are so thankful for this time yeah. when we'll be learning about how to worship you, Father, worship ministry, and Father, as you are leading us, as you are opening doors of wisdom for us, of revelation for us, of Lord, learning how to do it in a way that pleases you, Abba Father. Let all that we learn, Father, be received by us in its fullness, Abba Father. We ask you to bless Pastor Ocean, speak through him, Abba Father, and lead us to a place, Lord Father, where we are able to worship you in the way you want us to, Father. And be very, very careful in things that you want us to be careful about, Abba Father, so that your name is glorified through our lives in every way in every walk of life we may continue to glorify you and we may worship you day and night father through our lives through our attitudes through our emotions and through everything father and above all through the spirit we once again thank you for bringing us together in this fellowship we thank you for teaching us beautiful words of life thank you for everything that you've given us in this day we give you glory, honor, and praise and ask this prayer. And, and I also want to pray for Brother Charles, who is not keeping well, Father. We just came to know. We ask you to give him uh, complete healing, health, and wholeness above Father and revive him above Father by the power of your Holy Spirit. Completely heal him and help him above. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Thanks, Avni. Thank you. All right, Charles, hope you get better soon. All right. Um, yeah, uh, let's uh, do a quick, very quick uh, recap of what we uh, covered last week and uh, we'll take it forward from there. So we completed uh, chapter three in worship ministry. Uh, we just looked at it as an introduction to worship ministry in itself. Um, we looked at the four relationships um, that can make or break us. If you want to have like an a, 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 an impactful worship ministry, there uh, are in our context worship ministry but it's applicable for any ministry that you're involved in uh is your relationship with god your relationship with your family uh your relationship with your pastor um and finally your relationship with the extended uh team members uh, that you are leading right the importance of all of it and all of it are significant in its own way uh, right and then we very briefly saw uh, the daily tasks of running a worship ministry uh, worship ministry is not a saturday or a sunday thing uh, it's uh, not just what happens on a sunday but also there are, there is more to worship ministry um, than what happens only on a sunday every planning that is involved some of the things that we did see was uh, the importance of uh, scheduling or rostering uh, teams of having a roster in place um, the task of pastoring your team members uh, you know we are not just uh, worship leaders if you're a worship pastor or if you're leading a worship ministry uh, you are their shepherd right we ought to care for them nurture them lead them guide them um all of that so that's another task of pastoring your team members uh the task of meeting with your pastors uh we could we saw two 
uh, one meeting is the vision casting meeting. You meet him to discuss about his vision for that particular year or your your vision in your heart uh, for the worship ministry, for the worship team for that particular year. That's a, that's a meeting in its own. And then also meeting him uh, frequently, communicating with him, with your senior pastor on a regular basis keeping him updated on what's happening um, with regards to ministry because uh, there will be a lot in his plate that he has to follow up with and he will forget, he or she will forget. Uh, um, but so it is, it comes down to the responsibility of the worship pastor, worship coordinator, worship leader, whatever your title uh, will be um, with the church to meet with him, to keep him updated regularly, but the task of budgeting, uh, you know, paying and paying the vendors, the resources, um, etc., and uh, the task of planning music for the year, for the week, uh, the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church, uh, and the task of uh, growing in your musical uh, and your leadership skills uh, on a regular basis. So that in brief is an introduction to the worship ministry it's like a short window a sneak peek into worship ministry and there's so much more to it right uh, i mean it, it's it's vast uh, right but then uh, now uh, let's go into chapter four uh, in your pdf um, worship ministry in the local church uh, page 40 uh, and and in this chapter, we'll study about the organizational aspects of the worship ministry, right? Uh, and immediately, it, it may seem like for, at least for some of us, you know, uh, organized aspect of, of worship ministry, should worship ministry be organized? Uh, uh, does it really happen? Uh, I haven't seen it happen, but then, uh, hey, yeah. Uh, you know, this the organizational aspect of worship ministry is a very, very important, uh, right? Um, so uh, let don't uh, having an efficient uh, and an organized team uh, will have a larger impact. So uh, very quickly, so uh, this is how uh, this the the worship ministry is organized at APC, um, right? So. You have uh, you have a, the senior pastor, and under the supervision of the senior pastor, there is the worship pastor, um, and then under the supervision of the worship pastor, uh, there is the band, uh, the sound team, the media team, the LCD projectors. You know, all of that comes into that. Uh, the singers, the singers also come into the band, uh, but you know, we try to uh, focus differently on the musicians and the vocalists uh, separately. Uh, right, because uh, we are a team at the end of the day, um, isn't it? Um, and so, uh, that I hope that image kind of gives uh, a brief uh, under, uh, explanation or an understanding of how we are organized. It's very simple, isn't it? It's a simple flowchart. There's a senior pastor, uh, there's a worship pastor, and everything else, uh, you know, that that comes under the supervision or or the leadership of the worship pastor. Okay, so uh, the sound team, we will learn a little bit more about uh, the sound, uh, you know, the equipments that is uh, that are necessary in the chapters to come. Uh, but then, then you'll understand what's the role of the worship pastor in the sound team, right? And also the, the media team, uh, really a worship pastor should also be involved with the media team, uh, pretty much, yes. Um, so one of the examples uh, was, um, I think, about four years ago, 2018 or so. Um, there were a lot of inconsistencies in the lyrics of the song that was being projected for the congregation as the worship leaders were singing, as the worship team was leading. Uh, there were inconsistencies. Uh, there's so many things. It can be, you know, spell check is one of the reason and. Um, I mean, at APC, most of the time we are singing English songs, and when you take the language of English, uh, we have to decide if it's, it's going to be spelt in uh, American English or British English. And so, uh, Pasta Ashish prefers uh, using American English. And so, um, there was inconsistencies in over there, uh, and also uh, the font um, or the the case. Okay, which where which were where do we use the uppercase and the lowercase? Uh, you know, for all all of that. 
And so we had to sit together, uh, me, Pastor JX, with the media team, and Pastor Ashish, and we decided, okay, we're going to use this, uh, Amer the American English, uh, you know, small words like, how do I say, favor, uh, you know, Brits would spell it without the U, Americans would spell it with a U, and all of that. So small details like that, you work it out and go through the database of, I don't know, thousand odd songs uh, <laughs> and uh, spell check, correct them. And also, we decided to change the entire font, uh, the case to uppercase. All the lyrics, every word would be in uppercase just to be consistent. And, you know, so there would not be any. Um, so, that's an example of how a worship pastor, worship leader is also involved with the media team, right? Uh, gone are the days of the OHPs, right? Overhead projections. <laughs> you remember that? Uh, anybody old enough to remember that? Those days, it was amazing. You just, you know, put it under there, show the lyrics, take it off. Uh, but yeah, now uh, we've become more sophisticated, uh, use different softwares and whatnot, right? So that's how uh, we are involved with the media team. Uh, and with the sound team, uh, we coordinate with them with regards to what equipments do we need to buy, uh, you know, with regards to this, uh, the speakers and the microphones, um, the cables, the batteries, the small things like that, the mic stands, the guitar stands, how many stands do we need, the music stands, uh, you know, and having a constant conversation with them, you are involved. At the end of the day, when we talk about worship ministry, I mean, we are, in this context, we are now talking about the music and the sound as well, right? And also the overall, uh, you know, the equipment that is necessary for the church. And so that's another important aspect of uh, and the responsibility of a worship pastor with the sound team. So that's the basic picture. Uh, I hope you get an idea. Um, I mean, it doesn't, when you're leading, when you're planting a church, if you're leading a worship ministry, I mean, you can organize it the way you want to. Uh, but I'm just, this, most of the examples that we will look at uh, from this chapter and the next chapter is how uh, worship ministry functions at APC. And all of that is a suggestion or guidelines or, you know, or ideas that you make, you can take it and incorporate it in your church. Or if there's a better ideas, you can email it to me uh, as well. Okay. So it's not, it's not to say that right, this is how we're doing it APC. You also should do it. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind, please. Okay. So let's uh, keep, um, let's move on to page 41. Um, so we see that we are uh, the worship pastor will be under the supervision of the senior pastor. Right? So very, it's very quickly understand um, the role um, of the pastor. It's just very good. There is um, the pastor is the one who is ultimately responsible to God uh, for the church. So the worship team comes under his pastoral oversight. Right? He provides general vision direction and motivation he shares his goals for worship with the team through the worship pastor okay that's uh, very important you see that so he shares his goals for the for worship with the team through the worship pastor um, sometimes gives the worship pastor the plan of messages um, for the year so that the team can prepare appropriate um, songs Right, all the sermon series, the sermon plans, and also, uh, yeah, everything that is planned for the year uh, will be sent out so that you know we can plan, uh, prepare appropriate songs. Right, um, his role as an example, the pastor is the key to the worship ministry. He must be an example of a worshiper before the congregation. Uh, so this is where like the perspective is changing a little bit. So if you're not the worship pastor, and if you happen to be the senior pastor who under if, you know, if there's a worship pastor under your supervision, uh, this is something else to keep in mind. Uh, he must be an example of a worship. Uh, he must be an example of a worshiper before the congregation. A worshiping pastor will birth a worshiping church. A non-worshiping pastor will uh, will never have a worshiping church, no matter how talented the worship leader may be. Uh, he leads much more by example in this area than by preaching. He can preach about worship, but will see no response from the people if he's not living, if he is not a living example. All right, so that's, uh, you know, a basic understanding and the, uh, for us to know the importance of the role of a pastor. It is very vital uh, to the church as well. Uh, 
in his role to teach the congregation on worship. Uh, so just as we discussed that, uh, you know, worship, uh, the, a senior pastor uh, is the lead worshiper without the title of a worship leader. Uh, right. So um, the worship pastor, uh, sorry, the pastor should teach on worship, a uh, reason why we worship, biblical expressions of worship, etc. Uh, in the church on a regular basis so the congregation can receive the revelation on worship right uh, the last two words the revelation on worship revelation comes with uh, with teaching isn't it so there's an unveiling that happens uh, when there's a teaching to the congregation on different aspects of worship and the importance of it um, right the biblical and the theology of worship etc etc so uh, that's one of the roles um, is to teach the congregation on worship to create that culture of worship right and then the role of the worship pastor the role of the worship pastor is just to sing and lead worship <laughs> that's it huh? okay and then I see you back uh, next sunday again you just come plug in your guitar keyboard sing a couple of songs go home and that's done that's the role of the worship pastor isn't it uh, uh well yeah no uh, so in chapter three we began by learning that uh, worship leading is different, very different from leading a worship ministry, right? And we saw the different daily tasks of leading a worship ministry. Uh, it's not only Sunday based. And so here we see the seven roles of the worship pastor. Okay. Um, the first role of the worship pastor is a worship pastor as priest. Uh, so what uh, what was the role of a priest in the Old Testament? To stand on behalf of the people in presence of God. Right, to stand on behalf of the people in the presence of God. Okay. Thank you, Avni. And um, anything else? To offer mm -hmm. sacrifice. Yeah, to offer sacrifice. Yes. Thank you. To offer sacrifice uh, to represent, yeah. Uh, to be mediators, to hear the voice of the Lord and connect people with Him. Yep, yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, can someone read Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, please? Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. I hope I'm right. The revelation's got to be easy to find, right, guys? Oh. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, Revelations chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests, to serve his God and the God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So he has made us a kingdom and priests, isn't it? Um, to serve his God and Father. So there in itself, like immediately we see that our role as uh, uh, as our role as priests, right? Um, in Second Peter also, uh, very quickly, we all know that verse. Um, Two nine. Two nine, right? Okay. Thanks, Shruba. Yeah, you want to go ahead and read it for us? Wait, uh, is this one, right? 
I think it's First Peter. First Peter chapter two verse nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. First Peter two verse nine. Yes, sir. Yeah. Read it. One sec. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh. Right, so uh, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Right? Uh, I mean, the choice of words there is amazing. Uh, it's so you have the word royal, and then you have priesthood. Now, when you when you think of royal, you don't think of priesthood immediately, isn't it? Uh, but priesthood is not the first thing that at least comes to your mind when you use the word royal. Think of kings and queens and the throne and the prince and the princess, the great royal family. You 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 know how it is, right? But here the word royal is followed by priesthood. Royal priesthood. And uh and this this thing about priesthood is been in God's heart from the beginning, right? And I've mentioned this. Um, one of the recurring themes uh in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is that you keep hearing you, you're reading God say that I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be your God and you will be my people. Right? Uh and very quickly, if you uh if you go to Exodus chapter 19. Um, you know, Exodus chapter 19, verse 4. Exodus 19, 4, it says, You yourself have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay, now this was before they, uh, you know, th they had just come out of Egypt and, uh, and before they, you know, sinned by building a golden calf and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and God is saying, and so. And then we know later, uh, I mean, this st a long story short, I would, you know, and we've all read it, we all know the story, a long story short in the sin and whatnot. Eventually Moses asks, um, who is on the Lord's side? They shall come to me. And, and it says, the Bible says, only the Levites came running and whatnot, right? So from there on, you see that the Levitical uh, uh, tribe becoming the priesthood tribe. But until then, God's heart was heart was not only for the Levites to be the priesthood, but the entire nation of Israel to be his priesthood, a holy nation. And now that is made possible for us through the blood of Jesus. As we just read in Revelation 1, 5 to 6, is he has made us kingdom and priests, kingdom of priests. Right, and so we need to keep that in mind. And one of the, uh, as you have already and rightly mentioned, um, the duties of a priest, one well, you know, is a mediator to offer sacrifices, to serve, and whatnot. Right, he was the bridge uh, builder. Right, so he would rep the priest, the high priest would represent people to God, and then after meeting with God, he will come and represent God to people. Right, um, so you, you you're with me, right? And that's what we are all called uh, to be, is uh, and so that's one of uh, the key roles of a worship pastor is that um, that we are a priest, and we need to keep that in mind, right? A priest is the purest sense of the term, a bridge builder, right? Uh, you may prefer to think of it as a pastoral role in your church community or worship ministry, um, but with a different priest, right? So that's first thing. Uh, we are called to be priests. Yes, Christopher, go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor. I was just uh, just wanted to ask a question with regards to uh, the priest being the uh, representative of of God, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, uh, you know, in, in certain denominations, that 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 role is also, I mean, extends towards even you know, uh, providing um, 
uh, I mean, doing doing confession and you know uh, providing some kind of uh, penance, uh, you know, to the uh, uh, to the person who comes, you know, for, for confession. And uh, in a sense, the um, uh, the congregation um, feels that because this the priests are a representative, they they should they need to go through the priest to uh, you know to uh, be able to uh, uh, communicate and uh, and interact with God. So, just want to uh, you know get your view on that. Um, so, I don't know the details uh, about as in the functions of the particular denomination that you're talking about, Christopher. So when I mentioned that, uh, you know, the high priest in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, uh, would represent the nation of Israel before God, right? He would take uh, the blood and put it on the mercy seat. Uh, and then, you know, it was the high priest, if God spoke to him, and most of the time God would tell, okay, go and tell this to people of Israel, right? That happened with Moses, and we see it happening with his uh, brother. What's his brother's name? Moses, Asaph? Um, Asaph? Was it Asaph? Yeah, so, uh, you know, point is, God would tell him, go and say this to my people, and so, and so, and so, and so, right? Um, so that is what I meant by saying, okay, the priest would represent God to people, right? Like a mouthpiece, like a, like a mediator. But, uh, confession of sins and whatnot. I mean, now that if it's very clear that we can directly go to God and confess, and you know, one John, uh, one eight. I think if if we go to Him and confess our sins, He's faithful enough to forgive us. Um, so, I, that way, I don't think we need another mediator. Jesus is uh, a high priest. Uh, we we can boldly go to the throne of grace. So has have things changed from the Old Testament um, and how the priest was uh, was viewed, um, or how you know the the congregation interacted with, with the priest, and after Jesus came, uh, did did it did it change, um, or has it changed? Uh, I I would say yes, because uh, see the the priest. I mean, we're talking about the uh, the high priest and whatnot. We we're talking about the old testament old covenant and we are specifically even more specifically talking about the jews right the hebrews the jews uh, but once again because of the sacrifice of jesus we are all brought into his family right to, into his kingdom he is our father as well right he is not only the god of the jews the hebrews he is our god he is my god as well uh, right, so that in itself uh, says a lot of things, and so he is a high priest. And the book of Hebrews makes it very clear. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what else to add to it, but uh, you know, but if you're gonna get more specific about the Jews, uh, you know, there are the Jews who would still practice that, go to the temple and whatnot, uh, but then there are Messianic Jews who believe that Jesus uh, is the Messiah. So. Um, yeah. Okay. You're welcome, Christopher. Uh, right. Um, recently, I think last month or a month ago, we had a men's conference at APC, and the theme was uh, uh, prophet, priest, and king. Um, I mean, I would actually, if you haven't, uh, if you were not there for the conference, uh, it's available on YouTube. Uh, I think it's it's beautiful uh, teaching on um, you know as as being called to be a prophet, priest, and king more for men. But then you can, you're all everybody is welcome to listen to it. It's a must must listen because uh, that is leading me to the second point: uh, the worship pastor as a prophet. Right. So uh, in the notes we're saying we challenge the church to follow Jesus and actually be disciples. Uh, the word prophet. May uh, similarly to the word priest above conjure up an image of a bearded figure with justice in his heart and sharp words in his mouth. Or you may think of someone who, if you in more charismatic circles, regularly offers what they believe God is speaking to them for the congregation or, or those in their influence, say, thus is the Lord. But in this case, in our context, uh, what, why, what we mean by worship pastor as a prophet is. Uh, go back to its 
root meaning it simply means to prophesy right at its foundation to prophesy means to speak or sing uh, by inspiration right it is so much in line with the priest isn't it uh, is you 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 sing over you declare right um, and so we are we are to as worship pastors worship leaders um, as pastors ministry leaders in general we are encouraged to prophesy over our people to declare over our people uh, we, are, we have to constantly listen and uh, lean into God's heart to see okay what does he have to say for me for my life and for the congregation for the people for the team that you are leading and also it's this this book is very prophetic right you just declare this and we do that isn't it uh, we declare this over our lives we say you know i declare this verse over you uh, you know uh, you are free you are delivered you are set free example right um and so we are encouraged to do that constantly because this book is alive every word of it is alive right um this it's life uh, john chapter 17 verse 17 says are you sanctifiers with your truth and and your word is truth uh, isn't it? And then Jesus is the truth. Uh, we, we read that in the Gospels. So, uh, what, as a worship pastor, we are called to be prophets, to declare, to sing over, over the people that you're leading, to speak over the people that you are leading, right? That's the second role. And the third role is a worship pastor as a teacher. Are you guys uh, learning <laughs> yet? Oh. oh, you're like, oh boy, this is a lot. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, the third role, uh, once again, is very simple. Uh, worship pastor as a teacher, right? We are, uh, we have to teach. We ought to teach uh, um, the people once again that you are leading on on the word from the word. Um, the importance of worship, the biblical aspects of worship, uh, the theology of worship, the postures of worship, etc., uh, etc. Et so. You know that comes without saying and worship pastor as a pastor right that's the fourth role so we care for our community as shepherds recognizing the lines of leadership uh, we need to care uh, i read this quote uh, somewhere it's a very popular quote you might have heard it already is uh and this is more to do with the youth the young people is uh, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, can I say that again? They uh, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so, in the role of a worship pastor as a teacher, uh, you might we might know a lot of things. We might communicate a lot of things, uh, but then that will not have uh, a major impact uh, if your if your role as a worship pastor doesn't communicate that and say that you and show that you actually care for them that you want to shepherd them that you want to guide them because we are their shepherd isn't it um and so they need to feel loved they need to feel valued um etc etc so that's the fourth role of a worship pastor is pastor them right and uh the fifth role worship pastor as intercessor uh, once again, uh, this is in line with the worship pastor as a priest, because priest also would intercede. Uh, so we pray more than we say, and this dominates our leadership uh, style. Uh, and I need to, it, there might not be a lot in the notes uh, to talk about uh, intercessor or intercession in general. But then I just want to use this opportunity to encourage us uh, for you to just uh, learn about the importance of uh, intercessory prayer, intercession as a ministry leader, uh, especially as a worship pastor in this context, it's it, it can get so busy in our lives about just thinking about every other thing of putting a song list together, planning for this event, a worship set, putting a band together, the roster and whatnot. And we lose the wonder of uh, intercession of uh, praying for the team or praying for the someone uh, or we forget the wonder of the power of prayer uh, you know just because we're in worship ministry but then uh, prayer is so much more important 
uh, in our lives as worship pastors uh, and in, in leading a worship ministry. So uh, when you can, just learn about intercessory prayer, read about it. Uh, so many beautiful books out there on intercessory prayer. So make it a lifestyle uh, in your role as a worship pastor. Right, And uh, the sixth role is a worship pastor as a mentor. Uh, right, So we are always looking for the person to fill our shoes and to fill the needs of, of for exemplary worship leaders in our community. Uh, that is true, by the way. So we are always looking for the person to fill our shoes as because uh, we're not going to be a worship pastor for, you know, forever types, right? So you, you are building leaders of tomorrow. Uh, you are mentoring them. Once again, it's again in line with pastoring them. You are leading, guiding them. Um, and uh, and and training them, equipping them, uh, empowering them, and all of that. Right. So one of the process that I was taught uh, of the mentoring progression um, is mentioned in the notes. Um, it's a very simple process. Uh, this is the mentoring progression. Right. Uh, you're with me, right? We are in page forty-three. It's on top of the page forty-three. Uh, if you want to mentor someone. Uh, and if you are mentoring someone and they want to be mentored, this can be a simple seven steps, right? Um, so I would say I do it. And then I tell my mentee, you watch me do it. And, and then I teach you to do what I've been doing. And then you do it with me. And now the roles change. I do it with you. You do it on your own, and you mentor others. Right? Uh, so that's a simple mentor mentorship progression, mentoring progression. Uh, it can be complicated, and it's uh, helped me uh, in my journey and mentoring people. Or it's simple, isn't it? So I do it. Uh, you watch me do it. I teach you to do it. Uh, give an example of any any real life situation. Um, setting, uh, doing sound uh, in in church, right? Uh, if you or if you're a graphic designer or whatever, right? So I'm going to do the graphic designing. I'm going to do the sound for church. You know, you come and sit with me. And you watch me do it the way I choose uh, the sounds, uh, how I'm setting up the equipments and whatnot. And then I will teach you to set up the equipments and you know teach you more about the sound and the hertz, the kilohertz, and all of that. Now you do it with me, and now you do it by yourself. Then you go ahead and train others. So uh, the role of a worship pastor as a mentor is uh, should not be underplayed. Okay. Uh, and then finally, the seventh role. The seventh role is uh, remember we are talking about worship ministry as an organizational aspect, and so there has to be some uh, something involved, uh, you know, in our role is worship pastor as administrator, right? Uh, ad administrator. So you put together, put things in order, you plan, etc. You know, etc. So we order resources and steward people's energy to achieving lasting results so uh you know just from the notes it says i've been in local churches where worship pastor was weak and lacking in administrative skills but worship arose passionately and beautiful sunday after sunday in their congregation i've also been in churches where the worship ministry was so efficiently organized that it seemed like the maintenance of the system was more important than actual meeting with god on a sunday morning Yet, we need effective systems of the uh, ministry to run well. Okay, so it's it's a simple spectrum, right? Um, that we all have from one end to another. Um, so we, it's like, uh, sorry, I'm using a scale as an example. Um, I'm just going to flow in full prophetic brother. I don't need to plan anything. I don't need to prepare for anything. Uh, you know, only fire, 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 you know. <laughs> and then there's the other end of the spectrum, um, you know, 
any more planning uh, any more if it if the if, if the service is is organized anything uh, you know any more then uh, so much so that you know there, there's no vision of and or the importance of following the voice of God or the leading of his spirit uh, but then there is a balance right there is a meeting point uh, where both needs to be balanced uh, the importance of being organized and the importance of being led by the spirit and if you can if you can uh, and that is a skill which we will just talk about in the next section to come uh, but we need to understand that okay um, there is this worship leader called uh, Jeremy Riddle uh, some of you might know it he used to lead at Bethel uh, Jeremy Riddle he says this um, and stuck it's stayed with me forever he said prepare uh, you know like it depends on you and lead like it depends on God Right, I'll say that again. Prepare like it depends on you, but lead like it depends on God. So when I'm preparing for Sunday service, I'm going to prepare. Right? I'm going to put in my thing because I'm going to put an effort to just pray about the set list and whatnot. And Sunday morning, um, I share this with the team as well. Is Sunday morning we say, okay, guys, you know we've we've uh, practiced we've listened to the songs we've uh, we prepared we know which chords we are supposed to play which key that each song is in all of that is done we've done what we can now let's lead like it depends on him right and so there's this beautiful uh, mix uh, uh, a balance of being uh, being organized and being led by the spirit okay um if it helps some of the administrative tools uh, find an administrative tool that can help you like a scheduling tool uh, a set planning tool a community building tool uh, you know and have a core team uh, as well that that's that's going to be very helpful right uh, a core team uh, because now we have five at apc we have five different locations we have worship coordinators for each location um, you know they're like my core team types uh, you know they um they take care of location specific things with regards to worship ministry and whatnot so the importance is um uh, that's the seventh role worship pastor as an administrator okay so very quickly what are the seven roles of the worship pastor uh as a worship pastor you're a priest uh you're a prophet you're a teacher you're a pastor you're an intercessor you're a mentor and an administrator can i hear an amen <laughs> Okay, uh, good. So, yeah, I hope you all are still alive and uh, and well. Cool. So, uh, we'll stop here for this section, and uh, we'll take the break, and we'll come back and we'll resume with the next section. All right. Yes. Have a good one.